Very frizzy hair today. We're giving I put a metal fork in an electrical socket. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Speaking of stylish, this might get weird merch. Look how cute it is. Link in the description. Didn't ha totally have a plan. What else is new? This upcoming Wednesday will be my fifth round of chemo. That is insane and exciting and wow. Five of six. So we are tumbling down the hill to the finish and tumbling is correct. Today I feel really good. Feels almost like a bit unnerving. Am I allowed to feel this good in this process? That's just a bit of the anxiety that comes along with all of this. I haven't really updated too much about it because for a while I was out of commission. This round was tough. It's just hard for me to remember now because I feel really good and now even trying to say this out loud I'm like was it that bad? Was it that bad? And then I look at my journal and I read some things and I'm like oh it was that bad. <laughs> I just wanted to update you on like physically and psychologically where I'm at and also note some products that I've been using that I've enjoyed that you unfortunately if you have to go through this similar process might be interested in using and or if you know someone going through a similar process might be good gift ideas that's really the thing when you get sick everyone wants to help but there are limited tangible ways that you can help someone that's sick and Hank actually did a really great video about what to get people when they're sick and what to avoid getting people when they're sick and I thought it was very thoughtful and spot-on as a currently sick person. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going for here, but I enjoy it. Okay, round four. Round four. Wow. This round was a bit of a physical struggle and also much more of an emotional struggle than the other rounds have been. You know, two thirds of the way done. You're doing really great, but you still have a third to go. So you just sort of reach that emotional plateau of being over it, wanting to be out of it, overwhelmed with the ick of it. So in the beginning, I remember a lot of people saying, make sure that you let yourself feel everything that you need to feel, all the good emotions and all the bad emotions. Don't be afraid to be angry in this process. And I, you know, read all of that and I cognitively understood it, but I was like, eh, I'm not really an angry person when I'm sober. <laughs> it didn't really connect with me immediately about connecting to feelings of anger through this process. However, this round, yeah, I was very on guard about, you know, recently recovering from C. diff. So I was constantly worried about relapsing, which caused a lot of anxiety. You know, you blend two paint colors and you make another paint color. It was like the anxiety and the frustration combined and I did feel angry and I was like, oh, this is what everyone's talking about. I'm f pissed that I don't feel well. The amnesia of all of this is a wild factor because I sit here and I'm trying to remember how bad it was because my brain has let me forget already. But in that bad time, my brain also forgets that that bad time will be over eventually. So this round was frustrating. It's the feeling that I could not get on a level ground with my stomach and I was very hesitant to take Imodium because the Imodium the last time around was keeping all of this infection inside of me and so my association with Imodium being gatekeeper for the ick, I had to like decondition myself while feeling sh** physically. Lots of crying this time around. I did the LMC method. I let myself cry whenever it came up. Like emotional burps, the tears would come. I'd cry for like a minute and then it'd be okay. And then maybe later in the day, I'd cry for like five minutes and then I'm okay. Releasing emotional gas throughout the day. And that really seemed to help. So if you're struggling, perhaps let your eyeballs burp out some water and see where that gets you. Because like, I didn't even have the energy with my anger and frustration to like punch a pillow. I was like this flaccid, body on the couch with all of these intense feelings. The only way I could release them without exhausting myself was crying, which also exhausts me a little bit. Your emotions are like a dog that has to take a sh**. Go let it out. <laughs> let it out in the yard. 
relieve itself and when it comes back it's gonna be one happy dog not my strongest metaphors but i'm also not my strongest self right now this round i let myself just be pissed off a little prissy pissy passed out princess on the couch <laughs> i was also getting very worked up about not feeling well because I had to go do a biopsy for these calcium deposits that they found in my left breast behind the tumor site. And I knew I had to physically get myself to this biopsy and I was worried that I wasn't gonna feel well enough to go and I didn't wanna have to reschedule it. But come Wednesday, I was feeling okay enough to go so we went and let me tell you about this biopsy. <laughs> I'm still waiting on the results for it. it. Makes me a little nervous to talk about something that is kind of e up in the air right now, but my whole experience of life currently is up in the air right now. So I guess it doesn't matter that much. It's a fun little story. I told it a little bit on my Instagram the day that it happened because I just, it was unexpected and unbelievable. I've written about this on our Patreon. I've learned that I can't expect what I expect. I don't want to say that I've learned to expect the unexpected because I feel like karmically that is inviting twists and turns and surprises into my experience and I don't want to invite them I just want to recognize an openness to adapt to things that are not what I expected because this biopsy ended up being something I did not expect. I've had two biopsies before this and both biopsies were pretty similar. You go into a room, you lay down horizontally, you put your arm over your head of the area they're biopsying, a doctor comes in, does some general small talk. The doctor, for instance, the time before told me he liked my shoes. They were leopard print. Just a moment of humanizing each other before this Man I don't know puts a giant needle in my tip. They do local anesthesia, so the area is numb, but your eyeballs are open and your brain is there. You do not get knocked out for these. The first time I got my biopsy, I didn't know what the hell was going on and I didn't want to Google anything because I didn't want to freak myself out because my imagination, fortunately and unfortunately, is one of the most powerful parts of me. But I probably should have because the thing that I did to myself was make myself grossly unprepared for the physical nature of this experience. I went in stone cold sober. They poked around a lot. It was crazy feeling. It lasted longer than I thought it was going to last and when I got out of there and into the car with Ellie I just started sobbing because it was so much more intense than I prepared myself for. Preparation is like a life hack. So the second time I got a biopsy I took an anti-anxiety pill. I was ready to be awake but potentially not present and that biopsy went fantastic. That was the one where the doctor complimented my shoe. So it started out on a good foot. So I'm thinking I'm going into a biopsy similar to the last one I've been to. So I'm going to take another Ativan. I'm going to go lay arm up. I'm going to let them compliment whatever they'd like to compliment on me. And I'm going to let them do their business. And then I'm going to walk back out to the lobby and meet my husband. And he's going to drive me home and I'm going to be tired but accomplished. See, I'm very good at predicting my own future. That future didn't happen. A lovely nurse brought me back. Let me change into a beautiful pink gown. And then she brought me into a mammogram room. And a mammogram room is different than a biopsy room. A mammogram room is a small room with a big ass machine that has little handles like this that you put your boob on and it squishes it and takes images. It's like the biggest panini press you've ever seen. <laughs> and when she led me into the room, I said to her, oh, I'm actually scheduled for a biopsy today, I think. Like I'm correcting this nurse on um, what's supposed to happen. And let me tell you, I am not the kind of person that tries to correct a nurse, but I had already taken my Ativan in the car. And so my guards were down a little bit. I didn't have anxiety filtering my thoughts going from my brain to my mouth. She said, yes, you're scheduled for a mammogram biopsy. And I said, what's that? Which should make sense as the words stand, a mammogram biopsy. You're getting both a mammogram and a biopsy at the same time. In my wildest dreams, I never thought those two experiences could be sandwiched into one experience. They are two different experiences. One, your boob is getting squished and photos are being taken. Another one, needles are going into your boob and things are being pulled out. How we combine those two, it ends up being something like this. And that's not what I was planning on getting at the breast cancer center that day. I'm going in there. Then she said, for a mammogram biopsy, you're gonna sit up in this chair here, and then we're gonna push you into the mammogram machine, and they're gonna do the biopsy with you in the mammogram machine. And I said, oh, okay. 
as if it made sense to me. It did not make sense to me. So I sit down in the chair and then she takes out a towel and she puts it across my lap and says, and I quote, this is for spillage. Oh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. I think I've only ever heard someone casually use the word spillage on like a game show like Double Dare. They're doing the biopsy inside of the mammogram machine while I'm sitting up with this. There's a towel on my lap for spillage. I felt like I was being seated front row at a Gallagher show. <laughs> so I'm sitting with the towel on my lap and she says, I'm gonna go check on the doctor. She's just finishing up another biopsy and then we'll be in here and ready to go. Meanwhile, I took my Ativan in the car ride over. It is now kicking in. I've already been in a chemo fog, but now there's a Harry Potter invisibility cloak slowly falling over my face as I disappear more and more from the present moment. <laughs> but now I'm very relaxed and panicking because now I realize that in this situation, I can't just lay down and let this medication keep me calm while they do their thing. I need to be sitting up and actively holding my body in a position that allows my breast to sit on the mammogram machine while they do the biopsy. I need to be an active participant of this experience and I have actively taken medication to do the opposite for me. About 20 minutes goes by. I am just experiencing the most chilled sense of panic. The Ativan has only kicked in more while I'm waiting for the doctors. I'm a sleepy lady, but now I have to sit up in this machine and get cut open. The Ativan adds a less than a relaxing layer to the situation. I thought I was just gonna lay down and be like, go for it. I'm in a bit of a situation. Finally, that nurse comes back. She comes back with another nurse. And then the doctor comes in, this beautiful woman in a dress that puts some scrubs on, puts her hair in a hairnet, and is perfectly polite and cheery and upbeat. And is like, are you ready to go? And there is limited time for me to understand the situation before now I'm being pushed into this machine. I have no shirt on. I'm just vibing as they position my boob onto the mammogram smushing board. They smush me in and then they crank it so it's really smushed in because I have a small smushy and the calcium deposits are so close to my chest wall they need to get me in this machine as much as possible. So they position me with my arms over top of the machine and my boob in the panini press. Now I've assumed the position. I'm trying to hold on and hold this position for dear life, fighting my anti-anxiety medication. I'm trying to stir up anxiety as much as I can in my body to keep me alert and awake and able to do this. Ripping the machine like this, trying so desperately to put my tiny breast offering to this medical dragon mouth. They tell me they're gonna put the local anesthesia in and then one nurse just comes around to the front of me and goes like this. She just offers me her hand and I take her hand and I'm holding this woman's hand while they're putting a needle in my boob and I'm just sitting there thinking, God, when was the last time I've held an adult woman's hand? I don't even know, but you know what? This is nice. I thought there were a lot of people involved in this process when I saw three of them come in, but this woman's whole job is just to hold my hand this whole time. I'm a bit of a awkward, non-touch, non-physical person, but holding this woman's hand <laughs> gave me such calm. So I'm bracing for dear life. My lower back is like seizing because I'm so clenched and I don't wanna move because if I move and my breast moves and we have to reset me, that's not gonna be fun for anyone. Like how I imagine old timey people had to stand still for old timey photographs. I am holding holding this position. I'm also holding this adult woman's hand. And I'm also having like side anxiety of like, is this how you hold a hand? I haven't held a hand in so long. Am I holding it right? Am I holding her hand weird? Meanwhile, I'm completely topless and there's needles going into my boob, but I am worried about the correct way to hold this adult woman nurse's hand. The needle goes in, they say you're gonna feel pressure, they put the local anesthesia in and then they're trying to do the biopsy. I'm not looking at any of this, but biopsy needles I know are long. I do not like needles that are short. I don't like needles that are long. I don't like needles. I can barely tolerate a pine needle. They're not for me. I feel the biopsy needle go in the left side of my boob. I feel it go all the way through and touch the right side of my boob. At that point, I feel this wave of sweat and heat start rising through my body. And I realize I'm gonna pass out. I feel the faint 
rising like vomit in my body and I just look at this woman while I'm holding her hand and I go can I have a water like a scared little girl holding her mom's hand at the dentist she goes yes she gets me a water she comes back I drink the water and I feel whew the faint going back down into my body. They leave the room, they check the images, they come back in and they're like, we did it, we got the images. Whew, we can take you out of the machine. They take me out of the machine and I am just like, <sighs> I'm sitting in the chair. I don't even wanna look at the towel. I don't even wanna know if there was spillage. To their credit, they did it fast. That felt like it was under five minutes, uh, thank God. They were excited that they got the images and then they were like, you know, we were really nervous that needle was gonna go straight through on the other side. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know these women well enough, so I have no idea what the humor to seriousness ratio is. So to this day, I'm still not sure if that was a joke or not. And I don't think it was. I think that was a genuine concern, which is wild. And I understand the spillage towel. The woman bandages me up with an ice pack and she says, you can get changed. And whenever you're set, it's that double door over there back out to the lobby. That's the craziest part, is that they just send you back out to the lobby by yourself. So I walk through these doors back out to the lobby. I'm just holding a nice pack. And I look like I've been through a traumatic experience. And I'm walking out to Elliot, who's in the lobby playing his video game. And he just looks up at me. He's like, what did they do to you? And I just look at him and I'm like, that was crazy. But it was okay. I'm really glad we successfully were able to do it. That was a wild experience and again another situation in which I can't expect what I expect. Still waiting on the results, but wow, we made it through. So if you find out that you are going to get a mammogram biopsy, just know it's not the same as a biopsy. And I hope that they give you a nurse whose seemingly sole responsibility is to hold your hand. Because that honestly was such a specifically tender and helpful gesture. I don't know what would have happened if I wasn't holding her hand. Maybe that just speaks to a broader lesson of reaching out to each other in times of need. Anyway, you want to talk about some products and, sh and maybe some cancer capitalism for a second? I do want to tell you just quickly about a few little products that have been really helpful to me. You guys know that I love beanies. I am a beanie baby. One of you out there left a comment about satin lined beanies that are more gentle on your hair and ooh, did I go to Amazon and scoop up two of them immediately and thank you so much for that comment. They are so comfortable. I feel like these are better options for your hair regardless of whether you're going through chemotherapy. I got these on Amazon, like I said. There were a ton of colors and a ton of options and they were pretty cheap. A lot of people have asked about my eyebrows and eyelashes during this process. The cold capping only works for my head during this process. I was fully anticipating losing my eyelashes and my eyebrows so I got my eyebrows microbladed before I started the chemo process and then someone on Instagram left me a message saying that they use this product called Brian Joseph's Lash and Brow Conditioning Gel. They used it through their whole chemo process and they hardly lost their eyelashes. I said this on my TikTok as well. I'm doing some TikTok, guys. I, without doing any research, bought this product immediately. It seems a little unregulated and potentially homemade, but the reviews of it are really good. I started using this like two weeks before I started chemo. You put it on your eyebrows and on your top lash line every single day. That is the caveat that has to be used consistently because if you stop using it, the chemo drugs that are still in your system will get into your hair follicles and your lashes and eyebrows will fall out. This is my second tube. It's not cheap. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks. It's been three months and I'm a tube and a half in. Had some fallout of my eyelashes and some fallout of my eyebrows, but this seems to be working. It's not guaranteed. People have different results and everyone's bodies react differently. So it's one of those things that I'm just gonna keep using it until it stops working. And I've been hesitant to recommend this in the beginning because I didn't know if it would work, but it seems like it's been working for me. So knock on wood, it keeps working. So far, so good. We'll see. And then quickly some face stuff. My skin texture and like the quality of my skin has definitely changed through the chemo process and that's normal for everyone. I was Googling like skin products that are better for those going through chemo. I found this brand called Lindy, L-I-N-D-I, and they make these little packs of skincare specifically sensitive to those going through chemo. I love this face serum that is citrus, which doesn't make me nauseous. I'm no skin expert at all whatsoever. This is just what has kind of 
been enjoyable for me. Like I said, it comes in like a travel pack with a bunch of different products. So it makes a great gift if you know someone that could use it. And then the other brand that I've been loving, I found this brand called By Sarah London. It's a little bit more expensive and it comes up when you look up skincare for chemo skin. And I've been using this face oil every night before I go to sleep and sometimes during the day when I'm not wearing makeup and it's just so pleasant. And their face wash, because their face wash is super sensitive and I don't believe it has any odor to it, which is really helpful for people going through chemo that are super sensitive to smell. I got this back in like August maybe and I still probably have like a quarter or a third of this bottle left. So it goes a long way. Okay, I think that is the update. I'm gonna find out about that hilariously intense biopsy on Monday. And then Wednesday, I'm going into round five and I'm feeling so much better. You know, they know what they're doing by giving me three weeks off. It's like they've done this before. I have like a week to a week and a half that is absolute shit. And then I start to feel better. And I don't know what to do with that feeling because that feels unnatural to feel good in this scenario. And then I start to feel almost, dare I say, normal, which I know is not normal because I am so far removed at this point from what I understand my normal baseline to be. Be. And then I'm gonna go do it again next Wednesday and then we're gonna go through this whole wild high highs low lows cycle again and then after that we're gonna have one more and then we're gonna be done how crazy is that so feeling good but definitely navigating some more difficult emotions in this round which isn't surprising but is just there reminder to feel all of your feelings as you're feeling them get your emotional gas out that's how emotional science works or something okay that's the update for now thank you guys so much for watching and for all of your messages they are so helpful in a way that i can't fully articulate at this time so thank you and for those that are going through this process we're doing it we're doing it one day at a time one wacky traumatic biopsy at a time. It wasn't that bad. We did it. It wasn't that bad. It all happened so fast. That's it. I'll see you next time I turn this camera on.